The Cubs bullpen is shaping up. Who's a lock right now? Who's in the mix? Do they even need a closer next? You are locked on Cubs. Your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of our Locked On Cubs community by following and subscribing on all audio platforms, especially Apple and Spotify, where you can click the follow button and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Opening day is 20 days away. And once again, thanks for joining us whenever and wherever you may be listening for a fun Friday episode in which we will try not to speak about our college basketball teams. Sam, hopefully you had a nice Thursday as we record here in the evening. The snow is falling, but the Cubs continue to win We'll get to that later on. Also, best and worst of the week. But it's time for some bullpen talk first. Sure. As we uh, try to rebound ourselves here uh, from some postseason uh, hoops action. So it's good I to have see a, you. What was that? Good to see you. Yeah, well, it's good to be seen. So uh, the Cubs bullpen right now, I, I have a projected bullpen graphic. We're going to read through that. We're going to break it down. We're going to shimmy and shake a little bit with that. And uh, also some players still in the mix, including, based on those two discussions, who would be the closer right now? Do they even need one? What do we see David Ross doing? Yeah. Do we see the front office knocking on his door with that? Um, and, and we'll kind of go from there. So right now I have Thompson, Barucki, Leiter, Wick, Alzali, Hughes, Boxberger and Fulmer, I think there's six locks there uh, with Barucki and Leiter, Leiter being the the so-called wild card picks right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of reasons to like those two pitchers. Um, Are the Cubs really going to open the campaign with just one lefty and Hughes? Uh, Possibly, you know, even if they sign Zach Britton, he's probably not going to be ready in, in, you know, 19 days or whatever, if they sign him on Friday. So at the earliest, um, so it's possible you go with one lefty. I would personally like to have two. I like what Barucki has done so far this spring. And and quite frankly, Mark Leiter has been uh, a force, a bullpen force, a relief force right now. And his splits, especially against lefties, are really good. So he's almost a, a lefty uh, camouflaged, a righty, you know, physically. Um, but, uh, that's the pen right now. Uh, wick wick was somebody that I had in the mix. I believe the first time we did this. Um, but, but it's hard to see the Cubs actually having him begin, begin the year in Des Moines or, or, or with another team. Um, so I have him in there as well. So, so that's, that's my pen right now projected. What, what are your thoughts? Uh, <laughs> my thoughts are, uh, it's 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 a really good looking group of pitchers. Uh, I think it's the strongest part of this team that and their and their defense. Wow, uh, uh, I've said that multiple times. I think it's a really creative and flexible bullpen. Uh, transitioning into the closer uh, conversation, this, this kind of touches on it. I, it's not your traditional bullpen, uh, meaning I don't think there's, there's going to be a seventh inning guy. I don't think there's going to be an eighth inning guy. I don't think there's going to be a ninth inning guy. Maybe at the very beginning of the year, Ross leans on on Boxberger or Fulmer's uh, uh, experience to do so, um, even though both don't have tons um, just because they're veterans like he did with Robertson. But, but I think this bullpen will function best if it's positionless, meaning, you know, 
each day it, it, there's a different guy. I think the one guy we know whose roles absolutely is going to be is going to be Keegan Thompson. He's going to come out of the bullpen yeah. twice every five days and pitch multiple innings, hopefully with a lead. Ross will have to use that very wisely because if you burn him for two, three innings in a game you're losing, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but it's a very flexible bullpen. It's very creative. It's very diverse. Uh it should be a it should be a strong suit for this team. I usually don't say that leading into the season because there's usually a lot more questions about the bullpens than answers. But but that that group that you you uh, flashed up there right there. I mean, Boxberger's a solid vet. Fulmer's a solid vet. Alzali has tons of upside. Thompson has tons of upside. Uh, you know how I feel about about MLJ. Um, you know what I'm saying? Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, there's a lot there. I mean, there, there, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. So, uh, I, I, I could talk about this bullpen for days. I think the bullpen will go as wow. far as how it's used. Uh, and it has I'm to excited be excited for that. It has to be used correctly. Like for me, can you flash it up one more time, please? Oh yeah. For me, if, if this is it, and I agree with you, there's some question marks, Barucky, lighter and wick automatically slide into low leverage spots. They're low leverage right, relievers. Right. They are coming in in a in a in a not a blowout, but the Cubs are up a few four or five runs or down four or five runs or even if they're down two, three runs, those are those guys. Thompson, Alzali, Hughes, Boxberger, Fulmer, those are your high leverage guys. Tie game, up one, up two late, any one of those guys out there, I'm good with. Yeah, and, and I don't, I don't see. Do, do you see Alzali opening the year as a multi-inning guy? No, I, I, I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be a. I think he's got the best stuff out of every anybody in that in that pen. Um, maybe outside of Fulmer, but I, I, I like Alzali's stuff better. I think you have to be very smart about trying to use him as little as possible with lefties. Although late in games, lefties will come out of the bench. And I think out of everybody on that list, he is the most likely candidate to be the closer by game 162. And I apologize if you've made that statement before, but but quite a statement that that the bullpen is one of your oh I think your, it's your most yeah. revered pieces on the club right now in addition to defense. That's yeah that's a that's a big that's a big take. Yeah I think it's I think it's an easy take. It's fair it's I think it's fair. Yeah I mean look Bullpens are the bullpens in 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 baseball are like kicking in football. It's the most unpredictable thing. It's so volatile. Once a guy loses it, he loses it. You know what I mean? So I have no idea. I, I'm just saying, going into the year on my list of things, I feel like on paper the Cubs are better than a lot of teams at. I think I think they're they're better than a lot of teams defensively, and I think their bullpen from start to finish is better than a lot of teams. They don't have you know, that sexy closer that a lot of teams will, ha will, 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 will boast. But for, from top to bottom, I think their bullpen is very strong. I think their bullpen, they're, if I had to rate the Cubs strengths, I would have bullpen one, uh, wow. defense two, starting pitching three, base running four, offense five. That would probably be my order. I think there's a few names still in the mix internally. You know, you have Estrada who's pitching this spring, obviously is right. a prospect. Anthony Kay and, and Julian Mary. How about Cam who they, Sanders? Who they picked up from the Blue Jays. Tyler Duffy, Michael Rucker. Cam Sanders would be a prospect as well. I think that's somebody that I would like to take a deeper dive on at a future yeah. episode yeah. Uh, because he's been excellent this spring. Yeah, I And if Hayden Wisniewski wins the fifth spot, does Adrian Sampson become a long man? I know I'm not interested in that, no. but I think it's possible. Yeah, you know, it's actually a really good thought by you, and, and I've thought about it as well. I'm not a fan of it, though. I'm not a fan of it either. The question is, is do you need a long guy? Because in today's age, especially coming off the WBC, pitchers just don't pitch that long. And, and folks, it's not Keegan Thompson. He's not the long guy. He's coming in when you're trying to win. Uh, you, you know, for example. Because right, when I think of long guy, I think of mop-up guy. Right. Alec Mills last year was a mop-up long guy. But those guys have value because, you know, you, you want to eat innings. And, uh -huh. you know, I don't think they're going to need one when Hendricks gets back because they could just – they'll have a lot of pitchers. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, th there's a chance they may have – you know, they may take out lighter 
um, or, or or somebody and, and, or and put in and put yeah and put in a long guy. Uh, but that's interesting. That's more of a like a, a decision I see both sides of. Like I can't. I don't know how to manage a baseball team for 162, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, especially a big league one. So, like, <laughs> I'll I'll tip my cap and 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 let Ross and Hoyer make that decision if they need one. But at the same time, you always could just call one up if you're if you're in trouble, you know, in an emergency. I I, I like what you put. The, to me, that that makes the most sense. The only thing I'd say is I think Cam Sanders has really popped off the page. Yeah. Um. And, yes. And, and, and it's you know, exciting. But again, the, the one thing I'll emphasize is whoever starts the year at the bullpen, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, those guys, especially those last two guys, they're on that shuttle all the time. So, yeah, exactly. And a, a couple of these names uh, appeared in Thursday's spring training action. We'll get to a spring training game from today, right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by. Built Bar. Mm, man, Where should one. we start on Built Bar? Sam says that the Cubs bullpen is the, the Cubs' biggest strength right now. The snack game's biggest strength is Built Bar. <laughs> nice. So Covered in 100% real chocolate. Yeah. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. Unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. And... You can get a four-bar box in the brick and mortar stores of Walmart and Sam's Club. Had a built bar today. Cookies and cream yep. is my favorite flavor. Okay, that's something that I would target if I was you, if I went to Walmart or Sam's Club. Cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go to built.com for any of the variety of flavors or pick up that four-bar box. So if you're close to Walmart or Sam's Club, run in and get one of those or built.com. And you could thank us later to try a built bar today. I had a raspberry built bar. Yeah, and it, and it, and it yeah. gave you a uh, it picked you up during the day, didn't it? Yeah, and and it was really good, and and that's my favorite flavor. And welcome back in to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. And a fun Friday episode here. As we get to spring training action from Thursday, the Cubs won their ninth straight game, highlighted by home runs for Mancini, Wisdom, and Morell. All happened in the same inning. Jamison Tyone already with his third start of the spring. Up to three and two-thirds now. Could have went more, but got hit around a bit. Uh, but all indications are that uh, his stuff was still okay. Scoreless frames out of the pen from Fulmer, Wick, Hughes, and Duffy. And Julian Merriweather closed it in the ninth, but not before allowing a double to Reds outfielder and former high school teammate of mine, Nick Martini. Now three <laughs> for seven with a walk on the spring. Yeah, baby. Uh, so spring training action today, Sam. I, what position I, I did you play on that ball club? Outfield. Yeah. How'd you, did you have a big year? Or? No, no. Okay. So our team was loaded. Our team. Yeah, was right. No, you had one of the you had one of the great high school varsity teams, maybe in the last twenty years in Illinois. So I'll give you a breakdown of the roster. So we finished thirty two and eight. Uh, we we were six and six at one point. Uh, finished thirty two and eight. Uh, we had twenty six players on the roster. Thirteen of the twenty six either started or finished at a Division one school. Uh, four played professionally, two were big leaguers. Wow. And wow. Uh, that is, yeah, you're, what you're saying is right. It's one of the best high school teams nah, of, man, let me, of, let of me multiple generations. I'd like to break down uh, my varsity baseball team. So let me just go on their website and see how they did in 2012. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, I cut you off. I digress. Uh, that's all right. So uh, the Cubs, nine straight games. Uh, so some highlights here. We talked power on Thursday's episode, and there go the Cubs. Three homers in one inning. I had multiple text messages today, which always is fun if it's not work-related because not really many people reach out to me. And they, they, were like, hey, <laughs> Sam, they were like, hey, Sam, why do the Cubs keep winning in the spring? Literally, that was what – Sam, what is up with the Cubs? Like, they just don't stop winning. And I'm like, look, guys, it's spring training. But – they do have a very deep team, 
And so even on days, they don't put out their best. They, they're putting out better teams than most. And look, I, I look, my dad was telling me yesterday, he goes, hey, listen, the 85 Bears went over in preseason. You know, it's like preseason spring doesn't matter. I don't know. If they were losing every game, we'd be talking about it that it's bad. So totally. why not? Why not let them win? And, and, and man, you know, some guys are really hitting. I mean, Talcum drew another base on balls. Mancini homered again. He, I mean, Mancini, his spring, I think, is, is pretty interesting because he had, by his own admission, a disaster end of the season last year, including the postseason. He was a disaster. I, I think I even remember him having a quote like, I'm not contributing at all to, to Houston. And and he he he's a, a high upside hitter, and, and so so to see him hitting the ball like this, I think that's a good sign, and it's all it's all a good sign. I think the Cubs are a very deep team. I've said it multiple times. They're not going to uh, they're not going to wow you with the top of their team. They're not top heavy. They're not going to have many guys rated on the top the top fifty of the baseball rankings. But th- th- they have a very high floor. They don't have many weak links and. And if a couple bounces go their way and they're managed the right way, maybe we'll have a fun summer. And that's all you can ask for. And hashtag hope, but... hope for summer. Yeah, I mean, just just be be in the hunt by mid June. You know what I mean? I don't want to be playing meaningless baseball in mid June. That ruins my that ruins my summer. Right. We can hopefully go to a game around that time, possibly for my birthday, and it'll still be in the mix. Yeah, your twenty third's coming up, Michael Jordan. <laughs> baby. <laughs> MJ, MJ. Okay, that's. They flashed uh, his statue up at the United Center before both our teams got trounced this afternoon. Yeah, the house that Jordan built, huh? Yeah, not a lot of Jordan. No, we're yeah, How about blue. you guys make a shot next time? Yeah, huh? not a lot. Of, not a lot of Jordan running through Champagne. Yeah, no, uh, Iowa with their, I believe their 17th straight loss on the year. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So the Cubs this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, respectively, uh, White Sox, Dodgers, and the team from the north. Nice. Uh, before their first off day on Monday. And uh, I'm also going to be keeping an eye this weekend, Sam, on the WBC. All the domestic uh, tournaments or, or games start Friday and Saturday. Uh, team Man, USA. Otani, are you kidding me? Yeah, I, I do want to uh, Man. punt some Otani discussion because I think he's going to be even do more special things this weekend. Uh, but I'll just leave you with this, Colonel. And actually, you're the person to, to, to discuss it with because yes. you could bring in worldwide athletes. Mm-hmm. But if we keep it just to American soil, yes. he might be the most important athlete right now of any of the American sports representing wow. his sport. Wow. Yeah. That's a great, a great. But you would be the one to talk about Messi and, and, and et cetera. But, but in terms of American but, but, but story, I think it's him. What you're saying is because of what he means to baseball right now. Yeah. Versus what LeBron versus means to basketball. Versus the person for football. Or bas- yeah, yeah. I think that's a great, I think that's a phenomenal take. Okay. I, I, have, no, I have no argument with it at all. Yeah, I just wish that they didn't play at two AM. But yeah, so you didn't you didn't watch that game? Last <laughs> no, no, no. Neither did I. I was in REM. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I, and, and I'll be in REM tonight by about nine fifteen Central. And the Netherlands is two and zero. Yeah, I, 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 you know, and, and shame on me. I made fun of them before the the thing. I was like, you know, I made some soccer jokes because I know I only know these right. countries through soccer. So I started naming their soccer guys, and here I am. They got a bunch of studs and. And Korea's in tr- massive trouble. They they lost to the to Australia and then they played Japan. Yeah, and, and so and, they're in trouble. And you better not pitch Otani middle middle. Okay, okay. Or you're going to be in big trouble because he might hit one, you know, into my backyard. Right <laughs> over this over the pond. <laughs> uh, coming up next is best and worst of the week. Stay tuned. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. New customers join today. To get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet, just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On Cubs. 
Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. We're in your ears, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. And you can watch or listen on YouTube as well. Be a part of what we're doing here inside three weeks till opening day. The excitement is humming. And the excitement for best and worst is always had uh, by Sam and I. Uh, My best of the week. High school baseball season, now almost two full weeks in. Of course, it's not a spring start. It's really a late winter start. But I'm thankful that we've been outside (laughs) three times each week, uh, which is extremely rare. That has not happened yet in my six-year career as a coach. Uh, It was great to get outside. You've been coaching Uh, since you're 17? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's keep fibbing. Uh, Don't don't age yourself. You're a youthful, good-looking man. Right. And, uh, yeah, 23 plus, you know, a, a number, but, uh, or minus. Uh, no, no, no. So, so, uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh, I'm sorry that, that that's, I got to work on that. That's care, uh, baseball, high school. Baseball. Okay. Yeah. High school baseball. So, uh, we've been outside a lot the first two weeks, of course, as we're recording, it is snowing. Antarctica. So, so, so Wednesday might be the last day we were outside until Easter. <laughs> um, but it's listen, it, it was a good run and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be optimistic here. We're supposed to play next week. Um, but, but the outdoor schedule, definitely a little bit of flux here, but, uh, but looking forward to the season. And of course, my worst of the week is the Iowa Hawkeyes. Go ahead. Bas- men's basketball. Well, I'll, I'll Women's say basketball two in the nation. I'll still, I say amen um, on the basketball bad news part. Not going to get into detail. It's not a basketball podcast, but uh, Illinois is one loss away from one of the most disappointing seasons of my lifetime. Um, <laughs> no, it's not an exaggeration. No, I don't mean I, and I And I was going to go, if they won today, to Illinois Northwestern tomorrow. I was going to go. And really? Get, get, and guess who I was going to go with? Your dad. My, by myself. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna go. I, you know, people are busy doing stuff. I, I figured you had stuff. I first of all, I couldn't even get a second ticket because it was really expensive. Okay, uh, and I was gonna go by myself. And um, now you can't. Now I can't because I'm not gonna watch Northwestern, Penn State. Have more personal pride in that. Um, yeah. So best of the week, I'm gonna give a shout out to our listeners. Um, really big engagement week, a lot of great comments, even though some of them, uh, um, you know, aren't fans of me, I still appreciate the engagement and, and, and people are like making Twitters about us now. Like, like, it's just really cool to see the engagement yeah, and yeah. people, people care what we have to say. And, uh, you know, it's a good feeling. Uh, it's a good feeling. We, um, you know, we're really uh, Very thankful. I, I'm speaking for you. So correct me if I'm wrong, but we're really thankful and and excited to to be your voice for the 2023 Cubs season because you know it's something that I've I've been doing for a really long time to you and to other people but now to go into a fra- you know I know we started last year mid-season but that th- this feels like a really fresh dive in and there's so much optimism and excitement around the team and, and the future. And, uh, it feels like if I, if I had to, to make an analogy, it feels like buying Microsoft in the nineties, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just coming in and having this great group. So, I mean, I get these DMS, man, I get, I get a DM almost every day, every day. Yeah. Um, I know you do. Yeah. And they are always really thoughtful comments, questions. Um, sometimes they're questions that I, I, I couldn't even think of. Um, so it's cool. I really appreciate the engagement. I know you do as well. And uh, probably the best part about doing this. So it really is. And that was, no, that's very thoughtful of you to say. I, I echo all those sentiments and uh, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable saying at this point, just based, you know, one based on numbers, but two based on feel uh, we are, we are now the, the number one cub show. Mm-hmm. Um, we are on YouTube and uh you know, still steady uh, audio wise. And, right. um, you know, quite frankly, at least on, on YouTube, it's, it's not close. And, and, and uh, unfortunately we may drop to five or six. If this, it doesn't go away by Monday. <laughs> oh, geez. You know what I mean? I don't want to drop. No, ten. One, no one saw that. No, they all saw it. And two people already commented about it. Trust me. 
yeah, I get crushed so, with this stuff. Okay, so there you go. We got big news there. You, yeah. you, you know, there that represents our show right <laughs> there. We got a different sound, people. Yeah, no. Okay, no, we, we don't do. sound like everybody else. You know, and, okay, and, and we're proud of it. And look outside. The Bears are playing Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make sure you hit that NFC subscribe button game. for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Locked On Cubs content. Uh, keep supporting our show, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And you can drop us a text. There's also two voicemails uh, in the queue right now. That's 312-834-4634. I'll put the number right there. If you want to give us a call as well, thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Locked On Fantasy Baseball, available, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. New Hopefully Year's Eve, 1988, Bears-Eagles, the Fog Bowl. Hopefully everybody has a good weekend. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is number one, Locked on Co.